Hello everyone and welcome to this week's reviews. Dr. Seuss's classic story of a green being who hates Christmas and decides to steal the holiday is back on the screen with a new adaptation from the folks over at Illumination Entertainment. This is The Grinch. A lot of these Dr. Seuss books turned into feature films have had to face the difficulty of stretching a short story to fill a full-length movie. While The Grinch does that too, the directors Yaro Chaney and Scott Mosier have managed to find a way to expand the story without sacrificing the core themes and messages of the source material. A lot of emphasis is placed on the Grinch actually putting together and planning his big heist, and those sequences allow for a lot of invention and also show off how smart the Grinch is. We do get fun scenes of him being grouchy towards the Who's, while also getting just enough understanding for why he despises the holiday, but not too much. They develop the character in ways still in keeping with the book. There's also a sweet subplot involving Cindy Lou Who trying to find Santa Claus, which serves as a celebration of the unlimited power of childhood imagination. That's something I really appreciate about The Grinch. It's a very heartfelt film, but never in a way that feels cloying. Yes, most people being familiar with the book and the television special will know how it plays out, but the way it's done in this movie is nonetheless touching. The animation from Illumination is probably their best yet. The expressions and movements on the Grinch are fantastic and really help sell some of the slapstick comedy bits. I also love the design of Whoville, utilizing the fantastic Seuss architecture with the Christmas lights being beautifully rendered. Benedict Cumberbatch's Bill Hader impression for the Grinch is an interesting choice, but it actually works and allows his performance to stand out from Boris Karloff's and Jim Carrey's. And you know who's really good? Pharrell Williams as the narrator. Seriously, I've liked but haven't yet loved Illumination's output, but I think this is their best film. Next up, Swedish hacker Lisbeth Sounder is also back, this time in The Girl in the Spider's Web. This is a curious adaptation, as rather than continuing where the David Fincher film The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo left off, the filmmakers have instead elected to adapt the fourth book in the series. However, I also understand this decision, as it allows director Fede Alvarez to put his own spin on the material. The final result ends up being a rather standard thriller, though. To start with the good, Averis does direct the film with a certain amount of flair, with some beautiful shots of snowy Stockholm, although it's hard to make Sweden under a blanket of snow look unappealing. He also directs the action scenes really well, and the chase scenes are fun. Claire Foy does a good job taking on the role of Elizabeth Sounder, and there's a particularly great scene early on when she confronts a woman beater. I also really like Lakeith Stanfield as an NSA agent brought into the mystery. However, the actual mystery itself is not all that compelling. A lot of the surprises can be seen from a mile away as it goes through many of the standard airport thriller story beats. They also pair Salander with a young boy, but the bond between them does not feel all that genuine. There are also multiple scenes of characters behind screens typing and hacking, which I will grant is hard to make cinematic. However, as hard as Alvarez and Foy try to elevate the film, the screenplay is disappointingly routine and safe. Thank you for watching this week's reviews, and I'll see you next time.